can't claim that their new Tiger 1200 is the most agile, accessible and easy to ride bike in the big adventure sector. Now that is a bold claim when you've got bikes like the GS among all the other incredible models on sale today. But after what feels like a lifetime of hype, like loads of teasing, we have finally swung a leg over the new Tiger 1200 and I've got to say it did not disappoint. So the Tiger 1200 range consists of five bikes. You've got two rallies, which are suitable for off-road. So I'm gonna be testing them tomorrow and that'll be a video released later. But today I have focused on the GT models, which are the road bias models. So you've got your road going Metzler tires, you've got a little bit less suspension travel and Triumph tell us that they sell slightly more of these as well. So there are three models on offer. It starts with the standard GT, which comes in at just over 14 grand. And then you've got the GT Pro, which is your high spec with your slightly smaller tank. And then you've got the GT Explorer, which is your all singing, all dancing, 18 grand Tiger with a monstrous 30 litre fuel tank and all the bells and whistles. So when I say that this Tiger is all new, I actually mean it. This is an all new bike. You've got an all new T-plane crank engine, which produces just shy of 150 horsepower and 130 newton meters of torque. Now that is mega for this sector. It's got a new chassis, it's got a new swing arm, it's got new shaft drive, it's just all new. But the most impressive thing for me is the weight saving. Now the old Tiger was uh, a bit of a lump and this has saved a whopping 25 kilos. Now that's 25 kilos off of the previous Tiger, but Triumph were telling us that on comparable spec models, they come in around 10 kilos less than a uh, certain Bavarian rival. So that is incredible when you look at the weight. So I've just ridden these two today. I haven't ridden the base spec GT. So on the GT Pro and the GT Explorer, it comes with all the bells and whistles you might expect of a big capacity adventure bike. You've got your six axis IMU, which powers a whole host of ride nays such as corner and ABS, you know, traction control, hill start assist, you know, the lot. They both come with a quick shifter and auto blipper, which is lovely. And you get your cruise control, heated grips and keyless ignition as standard. On the GT Explorer, you also get heated seat, both for rider and pillion, which you can adjust independently. And obviously the monstrous 30 litre tank as well. And both bikes come with shower semi-active suspension alongside Brembo monoblock calipers, which Triumph say is the most powerful braking system in its class. Although I've not yet tied them down on exactly how they measure that. But the most important thing is, how do they ride? And are they as good or better than a GS? I have to say, it really did take me back. So for starters, the thing that got me with the Tiger and the Unveil was the fact that they made it, they wanted to make it accessible. Where everything seems to be getting bigger and chunkier and heavier, Triumph have sort of gone against the curve, they've gone smaller. And for someone of my miniature height of five foot seven, like 29 inch leg, that suits me down to the ground. So these bikes as standard come with two seat options, which you can adjust really easily. I, um, I started off on the tall seat height, but it is very difficult to get the reach on the floor. With the low seat height, even though Triumph say that it's not perfect and it's not set up, I found it was spot on. It's a, quite a thin bike, and for a 1200, it's really surprising how easy it is to sort of control at low speeds, do manoeuvres and all of that sort of stuff. It's, it feels more like a sort of 850, 900 than a 1200. And with that weight saving, the weight not only feels drastically drastically reduced but it also feels sort of better laid out like it's much more balanced and at slow speeds it's so much easier to ride saying that though the one thing that really did hit me instantly from sort of the first time we left earlier 
was the throttle response. So you've got your different riding modes and engine modes. I started off in road and that new T-plane crank motor is lovely, but it is very responsive. In fact, in sport mode, it was a bit damp earlier when we left and it was cold and it was too aggressive, I thought. It was just a little bit too aggressive. In road, it was much better, but just that gentle pickup up to sort of two, 3,000 RPM, it is very, very responsive. I wasn't expecting it, to be honest. It's got, it's got a seriously sporty side to it. And when we managed to get going and you know get some proper corners and it dried out, oh my God, it absolutely blew me away. Considering what the last bite was like, I was not expecting this to be as potent as it was. Like genuinely, it's on sort of the sportier side and it took everything I could throw at it and more. So the way that chassis works is divine and the shower semi-active suspension in sport mode is incredible. The only limitation with it was ground clearance. I was a little bit concerned looking at the tyre sizes, they're very thin. It almost looks like something that you get on the Targa 900, for example, but I needn't have worried. It is absolutely amazing and messing about with the suspension was really worthwhile on this. It's really easy, the dash is really intuitive and set up just to that sportiest. You really can have so much fun on this bike. Like we've done some really winding roads, some really lovely wide open bits. And to be honest, I didn't need anything more than this. It was super comfy and super capable and it really, really hustled. It surprised me, if I'm honest. And those brakes are incredible too. The ABS can be a little bit intrusive as you sort of, especially on the bigger model, when you're really aggressively hitting the brakes and stuff. But if you're looking to ride a bit, a bit more spirited, then you will not be disappointed with this bike. But then again, we've done hundreds of kilometers today. We've done some A road stuff, which is really good. It's really important on a bike like this. One thing that I really liked about it was the cruise control. It will sit at 70 happily and the engine doesn't sort of burr or make too much noise. You do get a bit of buffeting from the screen, but it's not the worst I've ever had. It's not too bad. And you can get a factory accessory fitted like screen topper, which I think would really help. The only thing that does bug me actually with the screen is that they've actually ditched the old electronically adjustable one. Now you've got to do it by hand, which is uh, a bit of a pain on a bike like this, but I suppose it's not the end of the world, is it? So I spent a lot of the day on the GT Pro, but I also managed to get quite a few miles in on this which is the road going GT Explorer. This is essentially the same bike, but you get a little bit more jazziness with it. So not only do you get 30 litre tank and your heated seats, but you also get this new intuitive radar mode, which Triumph have developed in conjunction with Continental. A bit different to what everyone else is offering where it sort of impacts your cruise control and stuff like that. This does not have that. So it's a back facing system and it's it's quite intriguing i've never used one like this before essentially when something just say you're on the motorway and you're pulling out and something's in your blind spot you get a little light up on your mirror you know, like in a car or a van it actually detects stuff on the speed it's come in how far away it is it was really interesting actually i did think it was a bit of a gimmick but after using it today i was i was uh, i was quite impressed with it to be honest considering this is the first time they've stuck a 30 litre tank on it you really can't tell massive differences between the two when you're riding them. I was expecting this to be a lot heavier, maybe just that little bit more lethargic. And to be honest, it was not. It was a really good package and it shows just how hard Triumph have been working to really make this bike the best it can be. The best bit about these bikes is how you can literally ride them all day, how you want. And it's like sitting in an armchair. I've always been a big sports bike fan, a big naked bike fan. Over the past couple of years, I've started riding adventure bikes a lot more. Last year, we did a big group test and I've just really, really become a big fan of them. And this bike has surpassed my expectations because after a day of, you know, doing a lot of dual carriageway work, doing a lot of A-roads, going through villages, we've, we've pretty much done everything. We started off in the damp and I still feel fresh. Like, I don't feel like I've done a full day's riding like you would if you were on pretty much any other type of bike. So for me, that ticks a big box. The comfort of this thing is there. Everything feels in the right place. Even though I messed about with the seat and got it lower, it still felt comfortable for me. It feels roomy. It's definitely a lot more space as well if you're a taller rider, so no need to worry about that. And everything's exactly where it needs to be. So 
All your controls are really nicely placed, really easy to get to. It's got self-cancelling indicators, which is a lovely touch. And even the quick shifter in Auto Blipper is just silky smooth. It works wherever you are in the rev range. All in all, Triumph have done an incredible job with this new Tiger. It's insanely comfy, like done all day, feel fine. It can really, really hustle if you uh, fancy being a bit more spirited, but it's super comfy as well. It's, it's a real rounder. Okay, there's a few little things like not having an electronic screen. I'd have ditched the keyless ignition and swapped it for that any day of the week. And it is still a little bit snatchy, but to be honest, you get used to it. You sort of ride it in a different way. And when that motor is singing, it is the best sounding bike in this sector, full stop. It is absolutely glorious. It offers loads of punch, loads of excitement, but it can be easily docile too, which is nice. And it has, to be honest, all the sort of rider aids and everything I'd expect for a sort of a 16 grand bike. This thing is just an incredible bike. The GT has really exceeded my expectations. It is a brilliant bike. I cannot wait to uh, get stuck in on the rally tomorrow and that video will follow soon, but until then, this thing is the real deal.